Hey, what's going on guys? So actually this video is a little bit of a different format. Um, I had a friend of mine who reached out to me. Well, basically it's a couple, um, a friend that I met a long time ago. They've been watching my success and my story and they really, really saw and can see that real estate investing can be their way out um, to really put their, their family in a better position financially and just for the future to live the life that they wanna live. So they reached out to me. I don't really offer coaching and I don't really like to get into you know people paying me. Again, I'm not a guru and I'm not an expert. I'm still learning this myself you know I'm just someone who hustles I'm an average guy and I'm really really excited about building this business and really serious about it so they see that and they and they reached out and now we're kind of you know just talking regularly and just you know I'm helping them through their process because I really love to help people obviously as you can see with this YouTube channel and uh, as good friends of mine we just do calls regularly throughout the week to kind of help them with their process so this call is a little bit different I'm not really answering a question that someone has asked me um, individually I'm actually on the phone with that individual and, at, and answering a number of his questions. And uh, you guys actually can listen in and maybe some of these questions that they have, you know, you can actually have answered for yourself. These are really, really good questions. And um, it's not anything specific where, you know, I have a title like, you know, how to start a wholesaling business or, you know, how to, you know, use PropStream. You know, it's a number of questions that he had, but they're questions that a lot of people have. And I think it'd be important for you to just hear someone else who's new to the business. They haven't done their first deal yet. Um, they're brand new to it as well. And I think it would be um, you know, very valuable for you to kind of just listen in. So I'm just gonna cut into that conversation and you can listen in and hopefully um, it answers any of questions that you might have or answers questions that you didn't even know you might have questions on. And again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can just reach me directly and I would be very happy to answer that question. So thank you guys for watching and let's get to it. So when homes are, are in, on the MLS and, and they, they fail, does that mean that that the realtor didn't make its quota within the time limit that to sell the home? Or uh, did the, they never got into contract with, with, the, with the buyer? And or, is, or are they just taking it off the market and then putting it back on? within so, three weeks to a month. Right. It, it really just depends on the situation. So you'll have uh, some people who will list um, with a real estate agent and for whatever reason just take the listing down. They just want to take it down. They have the right to do that with the real estate agent. I believe. I believe they can just take the listing down. Obviously, you know, with consent with the real estate agent, they can't, you know, just do it themselves, but obviously they can end the contract with the realtor. Um, but there are also times where a real estate agent will have a listing with, you know, a seller um, but you'll see that it says a failed listing. So what that just means is, yeah, no one bought the property at the, at, you know, during the duration of that time that the, the property was listed. So those are actually a lot of times those, well, I don't want to say a lot of times, but those can be, um, great potential motivated sellers because you have a real estate agent who, and it depends on whatever the conversation was with the seller, but sometimes you'll have a seller who asks the real estate agent to list it at this price, even when the real estate agent advises them that that's probably, you know, it might be a little bit of a high ask. You might want to, you know, list it for a little lower. Some people, they, they are just religiously like tied to this number. I want X amount for this property, even though it may not make sense for the market. So the real estate agent, I mean, it's kind of like a lawyer, even if it doesn't make sense, they have to represent that seller. Um, so they have to just list it at that price and it'll just sit and it'll just sit and it'll just sit. And actually the more a property sits on the MLS, the, you know, the, the less desirable it is i mean if you see a house that's sitting for you know 300 days i mean you're kind of thinking like why is no one buying this right so now why am i saying this is because it's a great negotiation uh sort of uh I don't want to say strategy, but it's just a great way to be able to, you know, have a conversation with the seller. Like, hey, Mr. Seller, I saw that you had your property listed for X amount of days um, and, you know, you know, and, you know, no one bought it or, you know, I, I saw that it was on the MLS and, you know, you, you took it down or it didn't get sold. Um, you know, you know, what was the reason for that? You know, or, or what happened with, just ask what happened with that listing and they'll give you, you'll find that they'll tell you whatever story that could really allow you to dive into, you know, well, I really understand, you know, what you're, I, I totally understand what you mean. And, 
a lot of times it's because they're just asking for too much. So you can either find out that, you know, well, hey, if you, you know, if you're working with me, you won't have to go through, you know, having, having to list it again and go through a real estate agent, you know, through, you know, the whole nine yards, or you can even talk to them about, well, you know, I know no one bought it at that price. You know, I would hate for you to just sit there and it not be purchased. Well, we're able to buy it at a higher price. And this is actually going into the weeds of creative finance. So maybe we shouldn't really go too in depth with this, but this is actually a great way to be able to um, open up the doors to creative finance because if no one's buying it at the price that they're asking, because it's usually too high, that's because most investors are, are, you know, they're offering 60 cents, 70 cents on the dollar to buy these properties. Now, someone might be wanting 90 or 100 cents on the dollar, right? They want like basically what it's worth, um, but it needs work, you know, so there's no way to do that. But you can, you can do it um, if you buy it on terms because they can still get the price that they're asking, but then you get your term. So maybe your terms are zero down, zero interest, and, and you get to pay, pay them, you know, a certain amount of money over a period of time. Um, so they're going to get more money, but it's going to, you know, have to, you know, wait over, over a period of time. But that allows you to be able to buy the property um, at that high price that no one else could. Mm, that makes sense. And yeah. then that's all going to be written in the contract. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's all written in contract. So, um, yeah, that's, those are all creative finance um, strategies and their title companies, the closing terms, they all understand. Well, not all. You actually, it's so funny. I just finished doing a video talking about you want to find title companies and closing attorneys that are investor friendly. So this is actually important for you guys. As you are looking for these deals, um, one of the things that you, since you guys are working as a couple, as a team, while one of you guys are looking for the deal, the other one can actually be, can kind of, you, you guys can kind of, you know, just sort of nip in the bud some of these other little details that we kind of, if you're just a one man show, have to kind of go and do like you know go go like do it as, uh, along along the way basically you know you guys can kind of do it before you even get there like you know maybe your wife can kind of do research and call up a bunch of title companies or closing attorneys to find out you know are they friendly or are, are they investor friendly do they work with um you know investors that use wholesaling or creative finance as strategies and stuff like that um because when it's ready to when you're ready to close you have like a you know a, a contract with a seller you have a contract with a buyer you want to have a title company or a closing attorney that understands these transactions. You know, they're not like they're not like. Wait, what? Do you, what is a whole? What do you mean wholesale price? Or what do you mean you have a contract with a seller, but you're like assigning it to a, what is assignment? You know what I mean? Yeah, you mm-hmm. want you want to make sure they know obviously what that means. So, so look for title companies that are familiar with with those terms. Yeah, yeah, and it's honestly as simple as just asking the question. You know, when you call up a title company or closing attorney, like I remember when I very first, I remember when I started in this business, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to talk to like law firms and title companies. But it's really simple. I mean, you literally just, you know, you can Google in your area, you know, closing attorneys or title company, whatever state you're in. Um, and, and, and and honestly, even the best way to do it, which actually is how it worked for me, is just ask around. You know, you guys should be joining Facebook groups in your area um, where they're, you know, invest investor groups that are in your area. Because what you'll find is, first of all, you'll find cash buyers, um, and, you know, because a lot of those investors that are in those investment groups they're buying properties that's why they're in investor facebook groups um and uh you'll also find other wholesalers because obviously wholesalers wholesalers were uh you know will market their deals in those groups but what you can do is you can connect with other people in those areas and you can ask them you know hey what title company are you guys using what closing attorney are you guys using and you know they'll obviously give you ones that they're using if they're closing a number of deals and now you know the work's done for you you just use the one that they're using because you know they're already closing deals so just use the same one Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's definitely a useful tool. Yeah. To get, uh, connect with groups like that. Yeah. Um, yep. So to move forward. Um. So I'm just okay. For example, I'm looking at this property right now. Uh. So they it's been vacant for five years. The purchase method was cash, but they still owe, and the house's value has gone down tremendously. Um. Would that be a good home to contact the 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 owner to say hey you need help or 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 try to make Um, a deal with so here's my answer to this now everyone everyone has their own opinion about this but i will tell you anyone who's done deals trust me i've done deals anybody's done either 50 deals five deals a thousand deals obviously the more deals you you do the more you'll realize this is at the end of the day a good deal is a good deal now I'll, i say that with a caveat right because it is important for you to obviously understand you don't want to be like locking up deals in you don't want to be locking up deals in um areas that are you know i don't know crime ridden and you know you know the values just like tanked and no one's really even you know flipping anything in that area obviously you know it's going to be hard to find out it's going to be hard justifying why a buyer should buy that property in that area because no one's buying anything in that area 
you know, but, um, you know, and, and one way you can do that is just, again, understanding like the zip codes in your area where there are fix and flips happening. And um, I think I told, um, I think I was telling uh, your wife about how Max Maxwell has a video where he shares with how you can find hot zip codes in your area where there's a lot of uh, fix and flips, basically cash buyers. Um, you know, you can find zip codes where there's a lot of cash transactions or even in PropStream, if you're looking at that property, you can actually just in the cops section, you can, um, there's a tab where it says cash uh, per, like cash purchases or cash buyers. You can click cash buyers and you can see, you know, how many, you know, relatively are there, you know, a lot of cash purchases happening in that area. Um, a lot of fix and flips happening in that area. So that's one way to kind of just figure out. I wouldn't really focus too much on, you know, prop streams, some sort of like valuation of like, oh, you know, the value's kind of, you know, drastically dropped or gone up. On only The only reason I say that is because I've never looked at that. And I've, you know, been able, I've been able to close, you know, a number of deals. So what that really just means is that's really not that much of a determining factor because it's not something I've had to actually, you know, think about or look at. Um, it's more so just finding a good deal. I mean, you know, let me ask you this. If there was a, if there was a, if there was a neighborhood where there's really not a ton of fix and flips going on, maybe like one or two, um, and there, and, and, and the, the, the value, the market value of, let's say a three bedroom, two bath or a two, one, doesn't matter, whatever. The value of this property is like a hundred thousand dollars fixed up. Okay. And you found a property that was really only going to need about, let's say 10,000, you know, we're just gonna make the numbers easy. $10,000 to renovate. Right. But because of who owns the property, how fast they need to sell and 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 just they need money right away they they are willing to sell you the property at like 30 or 30 or 40 thousand dollars would that be a deal absolutely yes absolutely i mean you buy the property at thirty thousand dollars and it only needs ten thousand dollars of renovation so that means total all in you're at forty thousand dollars but that same property totally fixed up is going to be worth a hundred thousand dollars when it's said and done. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's 60 grand of a fix and flip profit and you only needed $10,000. I mean, you know, cosmetic 10 grand, you know, work on the house. I mean, that's done deal all day. But what if, you know, what if someone's just looking at the numbers or looking at a, you know, a data or a chart that's like, oh, but you know, values have kind of dropped, you know, it, that doesn't matter. Cause what if in that area of that same house used to be worth 150,000, but it dropped all the way down to now it's only worth 100,000. Well, a chart will tell you that the value has dropped, right? To like 100,000, but it's still a good deal because you bought it at 30,000. You bought it at 30 cents on the dollar, even if the value kind of dropped a little. Anyway, so the reason why I'm bringing that up is just, again, you know, you really want to think about just like the, the, you know, is this a good deal in terms of what you can actually get the property, you know, contracted for with the seller and, you know, do the numbers work and doesn't make sense in terms of how much is going to be, you know, needed, you know, how much are you going to have to um, spend to renovate the property and then, um, you know, have a buyer, what the buyer will be able to pay and what they can actually make as a profit. You know, is that a good deal? Because a good deal is a good deal, to be honest. So. Yeah, I agree. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, absolutely. What's a, what's a quick claim deed? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So a quick claim deed, um, man, and, and like I said, and it's so funny, I say this all the time on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not an expert. I'm not a guru. Like I'm an average. I'm still learning. You know, people think I've been in this for like years and years and years. Like it's still been a couple of months, um, but I've learned a lot. And what I have learned is if, at least again, I'm still learning that specifically, but a quick claim deed. Um, so there's what's called a warranty deed and a quick claim deed. A warranty deed is what we want. Right or any buyer would want a warranty deed means you are kind of like what it sounds like you're getting a warranty you're getting a guarantee or at least the highest guarantee that there are no encumbrances or issues with the title of that of that property so like right now so this deal that I'm closing on um, that I just told you this this deal a couple of days ago where I locked up the deal with the seller and then I found the buyer what are we doing right now because I found the seller uh, I, I I contracted um, the property with the seller uh, I believe it was like Friday. Uh, or sorry, it was Thursday, and then I found the buyer Friday within a 24-hour period. But we haven't closed yet because we're like we're like waiting right now, right? What are we waiting on? Mm -hmm. We're waiting on title to come back, right? Because I used a title company, 
and I sent those contracts over to um, you know the title company, the closing attorney, uh, Martha, and the whole team out there, and they ran title. The reason they are running title is because they are trying to see are there any encumbrances, are there any liens on the title that would make it an issue for the buyer or anyone buying that property to close on the property. Meaning, if they if the seller had done a quick claim deed they didn't go through any type of title company or closing attorney. They just signed a contract with whoever they were buying the property from. Um, and they basically are accepting because when the deed is in their name, when they are, you know, when they are now the owner of the property, they are basically now transferring whatever was whatever issues were with that property. They are now transferring that over to them. That is the difference between a quick claim deed and a warranty deed. A warranty deed warrants that there are no issues because when you go through title, and there are, there, are, there are liens on the property, you now have acknowledgement of like, okay, they owe to the IRS or they have, there's a child support lien or there's a mortgage on the freaking property. You know, there's, there's liens, whatever liens, you know, maybe, you know, they, they didn't pay the plumber who came to their house. There's some lien on the property. Well, you don't want to buy the property because you're going to actually, you're, you're going to incur that lien. You're going to, you're going to receive that lien as well. So that allows you to go, whoa, 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 before I buy this property, we got to clear up this, these liens. And then when the liens are cleared up, that's when you then have a property that's, you know, you know, if you have a title company that says, hey, you know, the, the title's clear, the title's clean, that's what you'll hear a lot is, you know, it's a clean title. It just means that there are no encumbrances, there's no issues, there's no, the, the title company is warranting you that there is no, you know, it's like a warranty, you know, that there's no issues with that title because they did obviously the legal, you know, research and stuff um, to find that out and then you closed, you know, with that title company. So they're taking responsibility for that. If you do a quick claim deed, I mean, you're just doing a, you're just writing up a contract with a seller. It's a quick claim deed. It's not a warranty deed. There, there could be any kind of issue with that property, mm -hmm. and you're accepting that. So it's like, uh, so you're accepting it as is, basically. As is completely, because you can still buy a property as is that's warranty deed, which right. means the title is clean, and you take the deed, and there's a warranty that there are no issues with that. You know, and you're still buying it as is, and you're gonna have to renovate everything like that. But yeah, quick, quick claim deed is everything as is. The way, the condition of the property, including all encumbrances, liens, anything with, that deals with that property. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so what is um, what is last arm's length of sale? Yeah. So I'm I'm not gonna lie. When on prop stream, it'll really show you a lot of those terms. I, I wouldn't worry too much about those things. I, I mean, I try to Google them myself and kind of get familiar with that, but a lot of those terminologies aren't really, um, it's really not that relative to what we're doing because at the end of the day, we are just negotiating a price with a person who wants to sell their property. We get it under contract and then we find a buyer who will buy it at a higher price and then we close and get you know the spread in between. So when you hear the word, you know, longs, arm, length, whatever, or sometimes you'll see, you know, in prop stream, it'll say intra-family um, dissolution or intra-family whatever transfer or something like that. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, the, yeah, this is just really like the county or just like, you know, uh, th this is just them basically, um, there's just terminology to sort of flag or mark how the process went. So like intra-family transfer is like basically a family member who the property was transferred to them kind of like if they inherited the property within the family and they didn't really pay anything it was just it just allows like for public record or allows you know for whoever's looking up title or looking up sort of the uh the history of how the transactions have been happening and things like that um you know to just kind of follow what was going like what happened what was going on um so that's more so about like the transactions and how they happen and and you know whatnot um but yeah not necessarily too too important in terms of how we lock up the deal and um how we can wholesale it or buy it with creative finance and things like that but good question by the way but still good question so so you think for these these homes that are on here that had the length of ownership five five years and above that has that is vacant and, and it's not owner occupied do you think that these these owners just forgot about it because you know a lot of the houses here are are paid off do you think i mean i'm sure you you mentioned they still have to pay property taxes and stuff like that but are they just like not motivated do you think they're not motivated to 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 reach out because for, for example there's a home here you know um uh, here in jacksonville but the mailing address is in Fremont, California. So it's like, 
did you think they just forgot about it? I mean, oh yeah, no, they definitely didn't forget about it. <laughs> oh yeah, anytime you have a you have a, a a home to your name or a property to your name, you definitely don't you don't forget about that. Especially come tax time, <laughs> you definitely won't forget about it. I think what happens for most people is they they choose to kind of put it out of mind, out of sight because there's really not um, there's just no urgency. It's not necessarily like. I mean, I mean, imagine that same property catching up on fire, catching and uh, you know, catching on fire or something. I mean, now they, now they'll they'll be taking action to kind of focus on the property and be like trying to figure out what's going on with it. But because it's just sitting there and there's nothing really happening, I mean, there's there's a million there's a million other things for them to worry about and do throughout the day. Um, to where I mean, it's just you know, they're not really worried about it. The the, and and that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is they just don't know what to do. You have some people who just don't know what to do. I mean, think about it. You know, were you ever taught that one of the ways that you could sell your house or a property that you own, Ivan, is to find an investor in your area who will buy it at a discount? No. No. <laughs> right? So most people don't even know that they, you know, they don't know that there's this whole world of investors and, you know, all that. that's why our job is to market and put ourselves in front of them because sometimes they don't even know that there's an option. All they know is that, you know, there are real estate agents who buy and sell properties. Now, what if you have a vacant property that's ugly and jacked up, you know, from everything you know about what real estate agents, um, you know, what they buy and sell, what, you know, what we like to call pretty houses. You're like, my house isn't a pretty house. <laughs> so you're like, how, what do I, what am I going to, I mean, I don't think a real estate agent is going to want to sell my house and you might not even be in the position to, you know, pay a real estate agent, you know, commissions and all that stuff. Um, you know, or when they do an inspection and you have to, you know, fix things and all, I mean, so you kind of just just let it sit there and you just kind of hope by the end of the year you have some money to pay the taxes and then you just kind of again let it sit there another year you don't really know what to do yeah that makes sense um yeah people are busy you know, oh yeah we all we all are busy oh yeah oh yeah um okay so that's that kind of alleviates that question concerning the out-of-state homeowners so where, where are you at right now with kind of just what you're trying to do day to day? Because I will tell you, there are a lot of different aspects to the business. And um, believe me, you, you're not doing it yourself a disservice as long as you're taking action by trying to figure out a lot of these other things. Because, you know, you're, you're, you're just like me or anyone who's just like a hustler. You just want to know and you're curious and, you know, you're, you're ready to go and you're grinding. Um, but at the end of the day, I will tell you, locking up a good deal is really just all about timing in taking consistent action. Like the more people you talk to, the more likely you'll run into someone who a lot of times we like to call is like a unicorn situation. You might run into someone who's like today, you hit them up and they're like, yeah, you know, I want to sell my home. I'm trying, I've been trying to sell this. Oh my gosh. Thank, thank God you reached out to me. Honestly, you know, what can we do? You figure out a price, you know, it works within the numbers. You know, you have about a 15, $10,000, maybe even a $20,000 spread, you know, it's in a good area, you know, and then you market it, you find a buyer and you're like, oh my gosh, you're like freaking out. And you get this thing closed within like two weeks. Um, and you got, you find yourself making 7,000, 10,000, 20 or more thousand dollars on this deal. And uh, it really wasn't because you knew about, and I'm not, this is not a derogatory, I'm just, you know, painting the picture. It wasn't because you knew about intrafamily dissolution or, um, you know, arm's length, the thingy, or like you understood the valuation of like, I mean, it, whatever, you know, it, it, it only had to do with you were talking to enough people to where you got in front of someone who was wanting to sell their property. And at the end of the day, that's the foundation um, of this gotcha. business. Yeah, you'll get more confident, you'll, you'll sound more, like knowledgeable and people will feel more comfortable because you'll sound like you know what you're talking about because you do once you've you've been in this game you know more longer and longer and you're learning all these things um but at the end of the day even the most inexperienced like me or like anyone who gets started if you just know how to ask questions about the condition of the property hey mr seller you know thank you for reaching out i, know, I see you want to sell your home here it's been vacant you know what's kind of going on with the property catch me up to speed with what's happening and they tell you yeah you know it's been sitting there you know the whole story and then you start asking them you know well you know what's going on with the plumbing you know does the plumbing need to be updated does the electrical need to be updated um you know you know how's the roof how's the hvac hvac you know whatever you know the, the floors painting you're just a asking as many questions as you can um and then again you can even YouTube. I mean, Jerry Norton does a great YouTube video on the average uh, um, rehab cost per square footage or like the average square footage of homes. Um, and I use that for 
the first like three to four months when I was doing deals. Now I kind of understand and know, especially in my area, you kind of get to know like, okay, if this is 1200 square feet and it looks like this, it's going to cost X or whatever, you know, but obviously at the beginning, you know, I didn't really need, I didn't know like, okay, how much is a full kitchen going to cost renovation or how much is it going to be to repair a toilet or like, you know, okay, if they have to fix the floors, is that going to be 7,000 or 9,000? I mean, you just don't need all of those details right away. You just got to find someone who's willing to sell their property and then you can use the tools out that are out there that'll give you enough information for you to at least know that it's a good deal or not. Um, and you know, and then, you know, you can obviously find the buyer by marketing it. Cause if it's a good deal, the buyers will be there and, uh, and then dude, you're off to the races. So, so you utilize skip trace for, for to identify these phone numbers. Yes. So when you use PropStream, PropStream will give you the address of the subject property, obviously that we're looking at. Um, but then the address of the homeowner, you know, which is why you're able to see like, oh, it's absentee. The owner is out of state or something like that. Um, but they don't give you the phone number. So the phone numbers, you have to skip trace uh, that individual um, or use a skip tracing service where you put in the name of the owner, first and last name, you put in their mailing address, you put in, you know, the address of the pro I mean, all the information that you can. Um, and then it'll, it'll basically, um, it'll, it'll find search and match all the phone numbers, whether they're landlines or mobile numbers to that individual based on all the data that you gave them, which I'm saying, I'm just giving you how it all works. You're not really having to give them all the data because you could just export the list from prop stream. And then you literally just upload it to like a skip tracing service like batch or I, um, REI skip or something like that. Um, you don't need to manually put in, you know, you know, owner's first name, last name, mailing address. I mean, it'll just skip trace it. I'm just saying that's how they find the numbers. Um, but then it'll just pop out with all the numbers associated with all that information. That's, you know, on that list that you pulled. Um, and then, you know, that's where you kind of get to marketing. You either do SMS to that list with those phone numbers. You can cold call those phone numbers, um, or you don't even go to the phone numbers. You just do mailing. Maybe you just want to do postcards and mail to those individuals, you know, right now. I mean, there's, you know, all the different strategies that you can use to, uh, kind of market to them. So, uh, it's awesome. So it's a whole new realm of, of, uh, business. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you mean uh you mean skip tracing or just like all of this in general real estate all, all of this in general oh yeah <laughs> dude it's a whole world out there yeah it's so funny anytime i'm talking with people friends of mine are like man what are you what are you doing or that you know i explain this and they're just minds blown dude a lot of people we just we're not taught this you know what i mean so um it's just yeah it's mind blowing out there man what what you can do and um man i'm really excited for you and your wife i mean you guys are at a great position to just work together as a team and um yeah just you know uh, hone in on you guys' strengths and just go go hardcore with it man and, you know while you're doing this your wife's doing that while she's doing that you're doing this and then just you know put it all together and man you guys will definitely lock up your first deal sooner than you know it so that's awesome man. i appreciate that yeah absolutely absolutely well, cool beans. I think that's all the questions I had, man. Okay, cool. Well, like I said, man, I'm here, um, and um, I'm actually going to be leave, leaving the office a little bit early today. Actually, it's 4 o'clock here, Eastern Time, so I'm actually probably going to be, um, you know, kind of, quote, unquote, leaving the office. I'm here at home, but I'll probably head out in about 30, 40 minutes, which is, again, another beautiful thing about this business, man. I mean, it's true flexibility in terms of, like, you know, what you want to do and how you want to do this. Um, we have family friends coming over for dinner, and um, I told my wife I'd kind of stop a little early today. So I'll probably do another YouTube video, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll head off, but you guys are more than more than um, welcome to just shoot me a text if you have any questions or anything like that um, and then in the morning again we can kind of do our normal call um, kind of follow up with you guys and see what's going on um, but just okay. again my last bit of advice is try not to get super overwhelmed with all the things that are out there about the business and mainly just focus on finding a vacant absentee property that is distressed with high grass the windows you know the house looks a little beat up um, you know if it's a vacant absentee I mean it's a great um, you know, lead it doesn't mean that it's going to be a lead where you're going to wholesale and make 20 grand right away, but it's a lead. And the more you talk to, you know, those type of leads, um, the more you will find, um, you know, you, the, the, the more you talk to them, the, the quicker you'll find, you know, that deal that'll really work out. Um, and don't worry about all the other stuff because it, you know, like I said, you guys could work together as a team and she could find like a title company while you're doing this and X, Y, and Z. But at the end of the day, you know, 
it all falls in together when you just take that action. Like, let's say you guys got a contract today. Trust me, you guys would figure out what title company within the next 24, 48 hours to, you know, to <laughs> use. Yeah, you know what I mean? Some people, they need like, they need to, you know, Martin Luther King says, you don't need to see the whole staircase, right, to see the first step. You, I'm sure you heard that, you know, I mean, you don't need to just, you know, take that first step and just keep going. And plus you have me, like, you know, I'll help you guys out and, you know, just, oh, what's the next thing? We got this, we did this, you know, so. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Yeah, me, me too. Thank you so much, man. Cool beans. Awesome, man. Well, uh, dude, good luck with the kiddos today. I heard them in the background. Uh, just, again, so inspiring and awesome um, that you guys are just grinding it out and just not making excuses. Got a full house, and you guys are making it happen. So that's amazing. Tell us I said hello. and um, Yeah, man. Oh, another exciting thing is my wife is actually – I'm slowly starting to join the team here. So maybe we'll do like little uh, couples calls and we'll talk about stuff that we're doing together as couples. My wife, yeah, my wife has been totally just, um, just inspired and mind blown, obviously by just, you know, the success I've had and just all the things that I'm doing. She's just so like, this is amazing and so awesome. So now she's actually like driving for dollars herself and like looking for properties and um, she wants to help me in the business and work together. So she's like, you know, she, I'm actually basically about to onboard her um, as my wife, but as like a, uh, almost like a cold caller, a VA, um, she's going to be basically uh, qualifying leads that I get. So she's going to be the first person to contact these people and kind of get to know, you know, what's going on with the situation, how motivated are they to, you know, wanting to sell and, you know, the condition of the property, yada, 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 until, the, you know, until they're like, oh, well, what do you want to offer? And then she's going to, you know, oh, well, you know, I, you know, I like to get back with my husband, you know, and make that decision together. We'll get back to you. And then obviously I'll call and kind of do the close. So, um, you know, so it's the same thing, you know, that you guys are going to be able to do. Yeah. You know, work together as a team. So I'm sure we'll do a little team calls, couple calls in the future. So, um, but cool, man, I won't hold you up any longer. Thank you so much again, um, for calling. And, uh, like I said, just let me know if you have any questions and, you know, I'm here to help you out. So awesome. Man. Thank you very much, man. You guys take care. You too, man. God bless. Have a good one.